speakers. And I've just been told that <laughs> we should have one house, please. Once the speaker, speaker begins to speak, don't have a divided attention. Tabafes or Ejekarabota, because there are no windows here. Everything echoes back. It feeds back. So, So, as Christ fed the 5,000, he didn't wait and indulge in it. He proceeded further to his preaching. So, ladies and gentlemen, the next person I'm going to call Pastor Mrs. Oluwa Fumilayo Kule George, born and raised in Nigeria, surrendered her life to Jesus at a very young age through the Ministry of Sudan Interior Missionaries. She was a member of the Young Soas League and Youth for Christ International for many years. A retired registered nurse with 30 years experience within the NHS England. A wife, mother, and grandmother. A certified spiritual and general wellness coach. Studied at the London School of Theology. An ordained minister of God. Serving as a pastor in the body of Jesus Christ at Havers Community Church. And anywhere God opens the door to share the message of hope. Good news, salvation, and deliverance. A believer, a believer in the pers in person, work and power of the Holy Spirit, and the ministry of angels in the life of every Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please, to our pastor, Mrs. Fumi George. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you very much, mothers in the house, fathers in the house. Brothers and sons in the house, I am deeply privileged to be here this morning and I, I don't take this for granted. So thank you very much for asking me to come and share with you. I have the topic of legacy. How do we pass our faith to the next generation? Or what is a legacy? So a legacy can mean many things, but <clears throat> to our children, the kind of thing, oh, is the inheritance that, they leave, that we leave behind for them. So they are thinking of the houses and whatever money they are going to sell it for to, to enjoy. But really, a legacy is our very, very essence, our life how we live our life in the presence of our children and how our children see us, how our friends see us, and how we impact the world around us. So um, I'm going to take us to Psalm 73, verses 3 to 8. So here we're talking about faith. God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the thing that brings us to this building, because we, in here, we are the church. And we come into this building, we come to worship. So it says, um, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us, we will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded he, our ancestors to teach their children so the next generation would know them, even the children yet unborn. And they, in turn, will tell their children then they would put their faith in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commandments. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose heart was not loyal to God, whose spirit were not faithful to him. So there are, I have here three ways that we can impact our our lives, our whatever, uh, everything that, our essence, I call it our essence, because that's really who we are. 
we're not supposed to be one person in church and another person at home and another person in the, um, in the workplace and another person out there. The flow of the Holy Spirit should infiltrate into every area of our lives. But the truth is, we can't give out what we don't have. So the first thing we have to do is actually getting into a situation where we have a deep personal relationship with God through our Savior Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ sent to come and teach us all things. Because he said to his disciples, he said, I have to go away. If I don't go away, the comforter will not come. But when I go, I will send that comforter to you. And he's going to teach you all things. He's going to remind you everything that we have been talking about in all these um, three years. He's going to teach you. And then he will also teach you the heart of the Father. So when we, when we kind of have that, kind of internal, inter, inter, um, that relationship, that intimate relationship with God, the Son, God the, God, the, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then we will realize that there is no room in our house, in our lives, that should, be, that should exclude God. So our relationship with him, so we, we're called to a place of prayer. We have to pray without season. Thessalonians says, oh, uh, rejoice always, pray without season, giving thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we are required to pray without ceasing. How do we pray without ceasing? Do we just roll out of bed in the morning and we just um, get ourselves to work? Or do we actually stop, take time, thanking the Lord for opening our eyes in the land of the living to a new day, the gift of a new day? committing everything that is going to happen to us today into the hands of the Father, knowing and being confident that because we have committed it to him, he is going to send his angels to be in charge of us, to guard us in all our ways. So we, once we are able to understand that, rushing out of bed in the morning should be something that we don't do anymore. We should just take the time, always take the time. And then, when we have these children growing up, we have, to in, we have to involve them in this prayer time. Because if we don't involve them, if they, all they see is mommy is ready to drive us to, work, to school, that's all they are going to know. But, oh, we're ready to go to school now. Okay, let us pray. And you spend that time, one minute. They will be telling you, oh, mommy, we're going to be late. Oh, mommy, we're going to... We need to talk to God. I need to commit you to God. And you spend time and you do that. It doesn't take a long time. I know that we, we live a very, very busy life. I know it. But the moment we start doing that, the children are watching us. The two speakers I spoke before me, they, they, they talked a lot about how the children see us. They see through our hypocrisy. They see it like that. They, they know that, uh, mommy, that's yeah, just too faced, you know? And when that is, the, uh, that, that is what they are thinking about, they will think that that is how spirituality is supposed to be. So we need to watch that. So we have to be intentional about, our, about that prayer time, about all, the, all the, the aspects of fasting, times of silence. How do we deal with people around us? Are we, do we, do we, do we shun, do we shun them or do we embrace the not so privileged around us? Do you, do we invite people to our homes to come and have dinner? Um, do we, how, how do we, re, how do we relate to people? I, I know, I know that this is probably, you think, ah, we don't have time to be doing or that dinner, dinner thing. But these are things that the children are looking at. Are we, are we, are you, are we lavishing love on one another? Are we lavishing love on the people that we meet? Our children are watching us. 
they are watching us. When we take them to school, what kind of music are we playing in the car? What kind of conversation are we having? My sister was talking about the phone. Somebody's using the phone. Our children are walking behind. We're supposed to be talking and walking the scriptures with these children. You know why we need to do it? Because we are the only ones that are going to tell them. The school is not going to tell them. The school is not going to tell them about the Lord, about the wonders of the Lord, about the things that God has done. He's not going to tell them. They don't even tell them the stories of the Bible anymore. When my children were little, the, the assembly, they will, have, they will have Bible stories. They don't even have that anymore. So we, are, this, the box stops with us. So we're driving them to school. I will put one song on a 90s CD. It will play, one song will play to take them to school. It, will, it used to drive my children mad. You know, but today, they are in the bathroom and the song comes to them. And then they say, ah, I remember this song. That was one of my, it, oh, that was a song of a season for, for my mother. So these are intentional things. And I know that many of us probably do these things, but we're just doing it without realizing. So the purpose of me here today is to tell us that we need to become intentional. So let's talk about Bible study. We, they need to know the Bible, but do we know our Bible? Do we know how the Bible, the Old Testament relates to the New Testament? I always say to people, I say, if you never read the Old Testament, you will never understand the personality of God. You will never know that he is forever faithful. The New Testament comes to complete the Old Testament. So it's so important that we begin to read the Old Testament and we begin to share it with our children and ask them, what do you think about this? As they get older, even my five-year-old grandson, he'll say, oh, but I think that this is what it means. I say, yes, I think that's what, I think that that's good, that's good. How did you learn that? I'm just thinking, oh, okay, please keep thinking. Amen. And you know, in Joshua, Joshua, Joshua 1, 8, the Bible talks about, Joshua talks about studying this Bible continually. He actually says the book of the law continually. Why well, put Bible? Meditate, meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it, and only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. Amen. 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 So we are, we are all here. We want one thing and one thing only, to succeed in all that we do. And then we have these seeds that we have brought. This living testament of our, our life in this country, of our life anywhere in the world. This seed must progress. Amen. This seed must excel. Amen. This seed must grow. Amen. So reading the Bible and sharing it with them is so important. It's very, very important. And how did the Israelites do it? Because we don't have a clue how to do it. But how did the children of Israel do it? Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9 says, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And you must commit, one, commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Two, tie them to your hands. Three, wear them on your forehead as reminders. Four, write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Do the next generation, we call them next gen, do they know how important your faith work is to you? Do they know how important our faith work is to us? We need to let them know. So we commit ourselves wholeheartedly to it. We tie them on our hands. We may not necessarily tie them on our hands, but everywhere, you know, magnets, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Be strong, be bold, for the Lord your God, he is with you. And everything that you want, he will do for you. Um, fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Just stamp it all over your house. These children, these, 20, these uh, 2023 children, they will tell us that you are fanatics. Please be fanatical about it. Because if you are not fanatical about it, then that means that, means that you are actually a hypocrite. Because they need to see us live the life. They need to see us live the life. So we pray with our season. We read the Bible with them. We pray with them. And in hard times, what do we do? Do we exclude our children from telling them about what's going on with the family? Or do we call them together and say, this is what is happening in the family. We need to pray. I had three daughters, and one of them, I could say to her, I need a prayer of agreement, and I can guarantee that. That prayer of agreement, she's really agreeing. She was the middle one. The first one, she's questioning me as we're praying. So, yeah, we we'll agree. The little one, he saying, oh, mommy, today. But that middle one, she will say, yes, mommy. And we will hold hands and we would pray. We will pray for whatever that situation was. And we would see the resolve. And then we will come back with all three of them and say, well, we did pray for this. And this is the result of it. Let us now thank God together. And we will thank God together. So today, when she's talking about a problem, and I say, have you discussed it with your husband? Have you had the prayer of agreement? I should say, oh, we have. I'm just sharing it with you. It's not like I want you to have it. I have already had a prayer of agreement. I just want your opinion. So by, by teaching her that as a teenager, what has happened, and I'm not saying that I did everything perfect. Don't get me wrong, please. What has happened is it's taking, she's taking it into her own life, and she's practicing it. The others, too, they practice it, but in their own ways. Because even though we will do everything that we know to do, some of them will still walk away. But trust me, there is nowhere that they will walk away to that the grace of God will not pull them back. If they are our children, who, the grace of God will pull them back. The Holy Spirit will rain on them and then rain them into the kingdom, kicking and screaming. That's what, that's what I always decree. Kicking and screaming. They don't have a choice in the matter. Praise the Lord. So another thing I was saying is this deliberate impacting of the young people is something that we need to eat, sleep, drink, walk it every day, every day of our lives. Why? Because the children are looking at us. My sister Ikanem was talking about when we're on the phone and we don't think that the children are listening to us. And I'm gossiping about Mrs. Akinyoju. And I'm talking about her. Ah, she tell you Mrs. Akinyoju. Oh, you know what? You know. And we think they don't understand Yoruba. But they do because it is at that time that they understand. <laughs> when you ask them to go and do something, you will first say it in Yoruba, then you have to interpret it to English to them. But when you are talking about somebody else, they, have heard, they are hearing you. So let us be careful. Let us be careful. He says, let our light so shine before men so that they will see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Whatever is honest, is just, is good, is of good report. If there is any virtue, any praise, let us think on these things. And if what I'm saying is not something that I can say to the person, don't say it. Don't say it on the phone to another person. Because your children are hearing you. They're listening. And they're watching us. They're watching us. They, they, they get more by what they see us do than what they hear us say. And we need to be aware of that. Amen? Amen. I'm looking at the time. So, we need to also give to charities that support children, intentionally support charities 
that support children, especially in the church. You know why? So that we are sowing into our future, a place where we would not be. But because we have prepared it, we are confident that our children will benefit from it. Thank you very much for listening to me. May the Lord bless us and keep us and make his face to always shine upon us. And may we experience his peace, his love, his joy in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, that is not enough appreciation to what we have just heard. Or is it because of the 10 minutes break we had? Thank you, my sister. That was really really powerful. Um, so we'll go into Q&A like I did before, look on Slido and get questions from the floor. I just wanted to um, add to what she said in terms of what our children listen to. How many of you, through your conversation on the phone at home, what you have discussed about the church member has driven them away from church. I say to people, Tisi where are you? She calls me last man standing. There's nobody, and I say it with my chest, full chest, that can say that they can call you MC Jenkins and start talking about Nkokotoshel in church. I will meet a lie meet a lie. So please. Let us go back. Those conversations that you're having in your homes, talking down on your captain, members of the choir, leadership of the church, and others, stop it. Stop it. Because what you're doing, chasing people out of church by what you say at home, is you will be God all of my being at the end of the day. I am not saying we should not challenge ourselves. I am not saying that we should not, when we see something that is going wrong, we should not call ourselves to order. But ah, let us stop it. Right, questions. We've got somebody there. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, looking around, um, I noticed that quite a few of us here work in schools or are teachers. And um, part of what you agree to, part of the teacher standards, is that you need to uh, make sure that you're not imparting your own beliefs or that you're not um, you know, encouraging a child to think the same way as you. So, so in a way, I find that that puts me in a difficult position sometimes, especially, for example, in religious education lessons or just generally teaching, when a child says, um, I don't want to give a specific example. I'm trying to be careful of how I phrase what I'm saying. But a child may say one thing, but you know in your, in your head the answer is actually found in the Bible, for example, or what they are actually telling you is completely, is completely wrong. But because of what you've agreed to in becoming a teacher, you can't really share that information. Does that make sense? Is everyone with me? So how do we find that balance in not straying away from what we are, from who we are as children of God, but then also making sure that we're not um, doing anything wrong in our jobs? Thank you. Hmm. This, the job calls for the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because he's a teacher. He's going to teach us all things. And I am aware that it's very difficult for teachers in schools nowadays. But there is a way that you can do it. That you can take somebody, uh, um, a Bible name, and you can bring that into their everyday life. How, do we know that the Bible talks about everyday life? Yes. It's not something that happened long ago. It's something that is happening today. That's why it tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. So what they just don't want us to say, Jesus did it. They don't want us to say, God did it. But we know that the when you wake up in the morning, if you're having that challenge, 
When you wake up in the morning, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to impact you on how to reach your children, the children that are in your care, the children that you have um, custody over for that, that period of time of the day. And he would help you. And that's not, I'm not saying that as it's not a cock up. It's something that is real. It's very, very real. Did I, did I, yeah? Thank you. Um, okay, then I'll take from the slider. I've got one question here on the slider. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so my question is like, in the household I grew up with, on the way to school, you can take the camera off my face, I'm very dark. Um, <laughs> what's the word? In, in the household I grew up with, we prayed before we went to school, like on the way to um, school in the morning, like this is how old I am, the kids are going to know what, you know on the take cassette, where you put the radio in the car, yeah. Um, my mom used to play all the songs from like Suri Liri, like on the way to church, on the way to school, sorry. Um, I was just going to say like, what methods did you use to, you know, impart like an everyday Christian life on your children as someone who is aspiring to be a father in the future hopefully not tomorrow but in, a, in the near future <laughs> praise the Lord okay so I had my girls and um, I raised them I was a single mother so and I said no so you know that you can work night duty and work day duty sure you all know that uh huh so what I used to do, I, I mentioned it, I don't know whether you were in then. I had this, um, I, would, I would take a song. It was, um, when, I think that was when they became teenagers, actually. So we would have, I would have a song, a song that ministers, ministers to me from the um, Hosanna Praise that month. I would take time and I will record it on a 90 CD. I loved it. It drove them mad, but... I loved it. And I will play it. It will play, for that month, it will play on and on and on and on. In the morning, before they go to school, because I would come back from night duty, pray, I would pray with them before I drive them to school. As I'm driving them to school, that's the song that they are listening to. As I come back from school, that's the song they are listening to. Now, there was, um, there, was a, this, there was a time that it was Mohisha that was raining when my girls were young. And I said, ah, Mohisha, yeah, me will tell like you. And they said, ah, why, mommy? I said, what's all that attitude? She has too much attitude. I don't like it. So we never watch Mohisha in my house. <laughs> but I will sit down and watch Buffy the Mo uh, Vampire Slayer with them. And then I will now say to them, so how do you think that should affect, what do you think she should have done differently? And we will just go around that topic. So individuals, there were three different nations that I was raising. One loved to read a lot. The other liked to eat and cook. And one liked to shop. So I will have books that this one can read, and we will have books that we could read together. The one that could like to eat, she likes to go to different restaurants, and she, you know, she's still like that actually now. And, and we will go, we will take do lunch time, and we will sit down, and we will find out, I will find out what's going on with your life, what's going on with school, how are things going. The one that likes to go shopping, I couldn't go shopping a lot because I'm a polio survivor. I didn't like that walk, that walkabout. I didn't like it. So I would, what I would then do to her is I would take her and then I would sit down outside. She would go into the shop and she would come back out. And through that, they all grew into their own person. But on Sundays, we will all go to church. Now my church, at that time, we had our services on Sunday afternoon, 4.30. And that was how I knew that that was where God wanted me to be. Because I hated morning churches from a teenager, from a young girl. 
We go to school all day. On Saturday, they wake us up to come and do housework. On Sunday, we are, can we not have a line in? You know, so that was in my heart. So when I came to England, one of the things I told God, I said, the place I am going to worship, I want them to be in the afternoon. So although we were looking at places, this place where we settled eventually, it, the, the first day we went, it was an evening service. And then they said, oh, from next week, we are going to scrap two services and we are going to start on Sunday afternoon, 4.30 p.m. And I said, Lord, I am so grateful to you. I am so, that even that little thing that everybody was saying, everybody goes to church on Sunday. God honored it and he gave it to us. So I will go to work on Saturday. I will come back on Sunday morning. We would have breakfast. I will do a little bit of sleep and then we will wake up. So one person is doing the washing, has done the clothes on Friday. On Saturday, the other one has ironed. So on Sunday, we will now dress up and we'll go to church together. And throughout, every, they will say that everything about, my mother says everything is spiritual. Life is spiritual. There's nothing that is happening in the physical that hasn't happened in the spiritual. And if our children, if we don't let them understand that, everything will be overwhelming them. Everything will be stressing them. They will say that they are stressed, they are stressed, they are stressed. I'm looking at you. <laughs> but it's real because they haven't been used to that. But this is where we as mothers and as grandmothers come in. We come in now because the mothers now are where we were at that time, walking around. So we are now the ones that have time to listen to them about what they did in school. We're the ones that can read the Bible to them, Bible stories to them. We're the ones that can teach them the Ten Commandments. We're the ones that can challenge them on their attitude or what they, what, why did you treat your brother like that? Why did you treat your sister like that? You know. So it's a total package is a holistic package it's not jesus christ in one room this room you can't enter because i have unforgiveness and they need to see us walk forgiveness they need to know that we get upset with somebody and we forgive and the next thing you say pray you are, you are talking to the person they need to see that otherwise they are logging it in and they before we realize it is it will begin to reflect in how they deal with their own situations. Thank you very much for that. Um, I've got a question on Slido, and um, it says, how can we align different exposures to make us all see the true way? How can we align different exposures to make us all see the true way? Hmm. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's what my Bible says. What does your Bible say? Is that what it says? And he says that we should love one another. He says because when we love one another, they will see our good work. And then they will, they will glorify our Father who is in heaven. So... Even if somebody's ideology is different from yours, from mine, how do I relate to them? Do I condemn them or do I, do I, sometimes you don't even need to talk about it. I can have a friendship with you, a very solid friendship, and we will not talk about religion. Because if I know that it is going, to, and we, we, Paul warned us about that. He said we should be careful about all these arguments because distractions, they're just distractions. We need to be careful. So if their ideology and the things that they believe in is not what you believe in, it's not what I believe in, I would not have that conversation. I will kill it. I will kill the conversation. The friendship would go on. And can we have friendship with people that are not of the same mind with us? That's what God expects of us that we should love everybody. Everybody, the world, whether they're male, female, we're praying for them, we're praying, but we should love them and we should embrace them. We should, you know, don't, just love. 
And you know what? Ask God to teach you how to love. As I, I do that all the time. Father, teach me how to love this person. It is almost, it's so difficult to love this person. Let that love that you have poured into my heart, let it just flow. It says the, it, the love of the Lord is shed abundantly in our hearts. So we now ask God to let it flow to that person. Ah, before you know what is happening, you are falling in love with the person. Sorry, um, when Akikumi asked that question, thank you for that. That was really that, straight to the point, no faffing around. But going back to your question, sorry, it just occurred to me in terms of, you know, raising your child and how to grow up with them. Now, because I grew up with the Akinyo Jews, and I trust them, I've got two boys like you all know, Eri and Gwingus. Whenever Eri is going out, he's the outgoing one, I will say, his child's coming. Once he tells me that Charles is attending, I, I, I won't call to see and, you know, ask if, no, I'll just say, is Charles coming? If Charles is going to that party, I know they will be reasonable. That's me. So we also need to know the friends that our children keep. You should be able to engage with them even outside the relationship they have with your child, i.e., when I see Akikumi, I can say, have you invited Eri to that program? But one thing is that I did not start it when they became old. I started from when they were young. There's a phrase in our house, Eri is 25. Till now, when they're going out, cover you with the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Even if he's amongst his friends, and I'm just speaking to him, I'm sure you would hear him, he would say it anywhere. So it has become part and parcel. So in raising our children, I'm not saying I'm perfect, in raising them from very early age, let us begin to introduce them into that sphere. One other thing, there was one time Mary asked me that, eh, why is it that I use God? He said it's in Yoruba, not too good. Mom, for your long call, long. I'm like, if I've said do it, do it, I'll now say, I beg you in God's name. Then he now said that, and eh, don't I know that it's extra burden? I said that eh, now. So if you don't want that extra burden, as in putting God on his head. So I know that once I say God, but how many of our children, even when you say God, when they know that the, your attitude at home has no bearance with God, it means nothing. We have another question. And I think, yeah. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think it's a really insightful and very helpful comment, especially from our pastor, from me, George. Much appreciated. Um, there are some perspectives, though, that I would, I would like to um, have added to what has been said. Because I think some of the challenges are that, um, uh, you know, uh, well, I was of the view that, and I, st I still am actually, that it takes a village to raise a child. Um, so, how are the voices being balanced for these children? And let me give some examples. Um, I see um, our young man sat next to you there. Um, Elijah. El yeah, Elijah, absolutely, ma. Um, when um, some of my, that are of his ilk, are coming to church, you know, their ears are plugged with iPhone. I mean, what's the, what is the, I, I, AirPod, I mean, what is the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, one you one, one yeah. So so even if we are playing music, Gogoro, they're not going to they're not they're not going to hear any, anything. You understand? And, if, and as soon as I put my, my music on to be preaching to them, that's when they put the uh, uh, aren't you listening to the what's ah uh, no that is it's okay, don't worry. I'm listening to one here, it's okay. It's, uh. So those are the kind of scenarios that we then get in. And sometimes because you know, as as a dad it's it's a bit more difficult for me to to enter into my daughter's world, but I still I still try. I, I still try, and they say, "Dad, what are you doing?" Ah, I say, ah, "Well, uh, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be a dad as well." So, how do we help and support um, both the husbands to 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 assist 
in these relationships, in these interventions, because to balance the, 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 the voice, I feel, is also quite important. And before I go, I just want to give one more example. Um, I have a, a teenage daughter. Oh, yes, it's only, I've only got one. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. I have a teenage daughter as well. So, I, and, and at that age, you know, well, I sense that we are drifting because we used to be really, really close. My daughter used to speak to me all the time. But because she's now teenage, she's now speaking to boys on the road. Can you imagine? But, uh, it's, but it's not on the road, Sha. She's speaking to boys. So I'm thinking, ah, what about the one that we used to all the gist with? So she just has somebody else to gist with. So how do we kind of deal with all these things? Hold on, hold on, hello. So you did fear. <laughs> There's something that we call house rules. House rules are very, very important. And they should not be compromised. And one of the house rules is that if you are having if you're in the car and they're driving with you, then the airplugs is not supposed to be in their ears. So once we set that house rule and we maintain it, they are also watching us. So are we saying that um, when we are in the house too and we're just we're talking to them and then we're looking at our phone? So we are already compromised. And that's and that's where the problem comes in. But if they see us doing the stuff that we say to them, don't do. I don't. Why? Why? Why do you have earplugs in your ears? I'm, we, I need you to listen to this now. Come, let's listen to this. And, and one of the things I did was watching that same. Even though I hated some of the things that they were watching, but I watched it with them because I wanted us to talk about it, to be able to talk about it. And we talked about um, the friends that your daughter is having. We, it's important that we know their friends. So even if I don't approve of a boy, I will still want to meet him. And then I'll say, ah, this one. This one ain't going anywhere soon. And it's like, ah, mommy, you can't say that. You can't say that. And honestly, to be honest with us, God shows us things as mothers that if we can just be bold to, 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 to stand up to these, our children, then we will realize that 10 out of 10, we're usually right in our, in our assessing of their friends. You know, you, if, if your daughter brings home a friend and you look at the friend and you see the way the friend is behaving, you, you don't want that kind of behavior from your daughter. So it's better to call your daughter in and say, this your friend is doing X, Y, Z. I don't really like it, you know? And, you know, that's the, bot that's the bottom line because parenting, as hard as it is, we can't even do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. We can't even be the best wives that God wants us to be without the Holy Spirit. We, even the jobs that we have, we can't even do it if the Holy Spirit doesn't do it for us. So let us, let us invite the Holy Spirit into our parenting so that it will, be, will become more intentional. He will give us direction. Sometimes you, you, will be, you will be sitting down and something will just drop in your spirit. And you just get up. And you just say, hey, so this is what you are doing in your room. But if when the Spirit has dropped it into your spirit, you just ignore it. The more you ignore the Holy Spirit, the less his voice is, is, is evident. He's, he won't, he's a gentleman. He will, not, he, will not hold, he will not rush. He will not shout. If he's the devil now, he will be pumping. Your heart will be pumping. Go and do it. Go and do it. Go and do it. Go. But the Holy Spirit will just be speaking gently. And if he drops it into your spirit, get up. Do something about it. And get to know your, your daughter's girlfriend, your boyfriend and her girlfriends. <laughs> get to know her friends. Get to know who her friends are. Okay, thank you very, very much. Now, because of time, we are unable to entertain any more questions. But one thing, I'll read one question here. And that question is very important. And that question is, <clears throat> it's a part B to one. 
the first one, and I think we addressed it when Akanem was here, how do we identify when our children are having mental health issues? The part B to that is also, if they are self-harming, how are we able to identify this? Let me quickly give you tips. If you have a person, male, female, who normally would wear a sleeveless top, right? And all of a sudden, they're beginning to wear long, that is the first thing to, to note, that why is it that all of a sudden, somebody who wears maybe half sleeve, sleeve three quarters is not wearing long sleeve? Because once they wear in the summer, yeah, once they wear long sleeve, you, they're covered, you can't see it. Unfortunately, I can't go into it a lot, but like I said, we will crave the indulgence of the leadership of the church that at some point we bring back a canim and we can have, because that conversation is not a 30 minutes conversation. It's a, a whole day conversation where we would expect people to be open and be able to ask without feeling, um, without anybody being judgmental towards anyone. So, um, the next item on the agenda, okay, and I just want to thank God for this community because these communities that we have, they are very, very important. My brother there was asking, how do we balance it? In those days, you could take a little boy and pull up his trousers. Are we able to do that now? They will say that, they will say that we have crossed boundary, you know? But we can say, oh, can you just dress nicely? You know, can you, we, there's a way to talk to them that they will respect. What's this one that I'm seeing your underwear outside? You know, but that's the, that's the beauty of the community. It's the beauty of the village. And one village will raise one child, many children. God help us all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause, please. We move swiftly. We move swiftly, please, to this etiquette. My dad would call it etiquette. Our children have told us that we should move with the pace of time. We should be trendy. So it's not every time that we want to eat okele. So these two people in five minutes, Peju and Bosca, can we give them a round of applause, please? Like, we are going to make hay while the sun is shining. Thank you. Please. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think the, the reason why we want to do this, it's not to bring anybody down. But as our children are saying that we're moving with time, and presently, because we are moving with time, we don't want to alarm our children where we go out in with them. So we want to do a bit of a showcase that we call etiquetting. <laughs> it's a construction of what we carelessly do when we go out with our children. And it's, it's a fading attitude that I went to a wedding and I was alarmed that the, the bride was so angry with her mom because the mom didn't know how to use the cutleries on the table. So they had to, they had to go and eat in their car. No, it's, it's a laughing matter, but it's not. So certain things, some people can come to England and England will never go through them. So I pray that we watch. She's done two things now that we carelessly do when we go out. The first thing is that when we get into a restaurant, for an example, what we tend to do, some people tend to do, is put their, phone, uh, their handbags on the table and start, and then secondly, uh, start um, using their phone. So basically, when you get to a restaurant, the first thing you need to do, the, um, the um, waiter will take you to your table, and then when you get to your table, make sure that your bags are by your feet, and then your phones are out of reach. You have to put your bags on the phone because uh, on the um, on the floor, so that you don't encroach on other. Because don't forget, you might be about six or seven, eight, ten people on the table, so you don't want to encroach in other people's spaces. So the first thing that needs to be done, your elbows should be off table. <laughs> That's a bad habit. 
elbow shouldn't be placed on the table. It should be by your side. And the first thing is that, you know what? This is the napkin. You take the napkin and put it, place it on your lap. No. On your laps, yeah? I know in so, some people, they like to put it, the aristocrats, they used to put it on the, by the chest because of their ball gowns. But nowadays, it's, this is how to do it. It's done. And in some cases, the waiters, sometimes they will help you to put this on your lap. So, I know this could be very daunting because you've got so many things cutlery on the table and you don't even have a clue. Some people might not have a clue, but... Um, just to give you tips. This thing before, we, before she does that, I'm going to pick a mom. Please don't be embarrassed. Because at every point, we want to learn. Can I have a bold mother that wants to learn something new? Yes, mommy. Mommy, I did go keep, please. Come round, mommy. Stop us, If you look at the settings on the table, what can you identify with? And how do you start if you're in a restaurant? First, first of all, I can identify the side uh, uh, dishes, is it? Side plates and um, my cutlery, they are there. So the first, um, the first, the first cause will come first. So, okay. Okay. Go. okay. Um, so, as our mother said, you know, um, as I said, this can be really daunting. The first course, you will see so many, we've kept this to a minimal. We don't want to put so many cutlery, but this is, let me say, basic. So, basically, um, the first um, course that is to be served is like soup, soup, basically. So you have this plate, this side plate is for the bread roll. And the bread roll will be placed on this plate. The knife there is for the, um, for the butter, but you don't use the knife to cut the bread. You break the bread. Yes, you, you break the bread and you butter the piece that can go into your mouth. You don't need to pick the whole um, bread roll and keep slicing it and holding it up. <laughs> that is, uh, because, you know, we ha because of time. So the next dish I will go to will be the um, will be the soup. This is a soup bowl, and even though we haven't got the correct spoon, but you start. You don't pick up the plates and drink it like that. There is a spoon here. This is not the soup spoon, but at least this way, yeah. It goes this way, and then you know. And don't please don't talk when you're eating or drinking. And you don't hold. And you don't hold it up like this. You don't put the bread, you don't dunk the bread inside the soup. <laughs> so, once you, and make sure when you are drinking your soup, you have to make sure that the other diners are also at your own pace. Don't just grab it and drink it and finish it. And, and say, you know, and put it down. Because the waiter will come and clear all the plates at the same time. So I'll put this to the side. The, let's believe that the waiter has taken that. This is like the salad for um, that, like the salad, salad plate. This small one. So you start from the outside, and, and to the inside. So from the outside, these two cutlery, the fork goes on the left side, and the knife goes on the right side. And then, this is how to hold the cutlery. Not the other way. Not like this. Not like that. Not fighting with the food. And when you are talking, you don't even need to talk at the table. But if, there's, if you need to talk, make sure there's nothing in your mouth. And don't use the, the cutlery to demonstrate. Ah, that like that, you know, throwing everything around. You know, you shouldn't. 
you shouldn't use the, the, the cutlery to demonstrate. So, okay, we are in London, we're not in Nigeria, please. So, the, um, the waiter, once they, they finish the salad, they will, take, they will clear the, um, the plate. To, so, the main course will now come. Let's assume that we have chicken and maybe garden blow and um, um, some potatoes. You know, you use this um, the fork on the on the on the left hand, and the knife. And this is how. Please cut only the pieces that you want to eat. Apart, no, you just the bits that you can chew. You cut it. You don't cut all the chicken into pieces like ah. You know, maybe you don't cut it at once. You cut it. The only, the amount that needs to go into your mouth. That's the only amount you need to cut. And then when you're finished. Yeah, you start, okay, say, say it. You start from the edge, yes. not from the other side okay. downwards. Okay, okay. And then when you finished, you place both cutlery this side so that the waiter knows that you're finished. And secondly, if you need to get up during a meal and um, you want to excuse yourself, you don't want to take phone calls, all you need to do is get up from the chair, place your napkin on the chair, and push your chair underneath the table so that the waiter wouldn't, would know that you are coming back to finish off your food. And then secondly, they've got three, um, three glasses here. One glass is for water. There's red wine and white wine. And if you want to pick it up, this is how you pick up the glass. You don't do like this. <laughs> and before you drink the wine, you can swear it around just to get the, the taste of the wine, you know. And um, basically, um, I hope you've learned something. Even though you're Bless you. <laughs> we shouldn't, another thing, we shouldn't greet. We shouldn't lean over the table to greet each other or talk or, you know. We should consider other diners. We're not the only one in the restaurant. Keep to time. Because nowadays, if you go to restaurants, you need to make a reservation. And if you miss your slot, that's it. So I think this has helped. Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that was helpful. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Hello, Yokulori YouTube. Ask Google. Sorry, because of time, we won't be able to entertain questions. Thank you. Please. Um, <laughs> now, I would like to invite our father, uh, the church pastor, ably represented by Special Apostle Dennis Ayerume, to say one or two things. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to seize this opportunity to appreciate the women of fellowship, women of covenant, who are putting this together. It's quite educative, it's quite informative. When the talks were being put out by the able speakers, particularly our mother who is still here on, on seat, the issue of bringing up the children came up to light. A bringing of children is not one person's business. It's not that of the mother alone or the father alone. It's the combined effort. If the mother says A, the father must say A. They must agree. If there is disagreement, the children will find a clue as to how to put their heads together, hit them, put their head against each other. When mine were growing up, we were in, we were in Nigeria, there is the house rule. At 9 p.m. every evening, we must appreciate God for the day that has just come and gone. And it is a known thing 
I work in the bank, and it, sometimes, because of the nature of work, I get home late. When I get home late, I meet them already doing the prayers, I join them. Sometimes even my wife will not be home at nine. But at that dot of nine, my eldest daughter will say, hey, it's prayer time. They will start praying. I will sometimes get there, my wife is not there. I meet them doing the, we first with serious praise and worship, then prayers. And my wife was the serious disciplinarian who always made sure things work out well. And I support everything she says completely. When in 1999, I was transferred to this country, and they eventually joined me. And they were put in school. And they started saying, ah, mom, this kind of thing you are doing with us in Nigeria is uh, child abuse. <laughs> My wife told them, told them, said, look, if you let them take you out of this place to a poster home, you are finished. I will continue to deal with you if you do what you have yourself to thank, if not to blame at the end of the day. And she kept disciplining them very well, making sure they keep to the rules of the house. And at some point, they asked me, ah, Dad, mom was in the, at our school, I told her, look, what your mom has said is the right thing. If you go outside of it, you are in trouble. So if right from child, childhood, you grow up your child well, the, they say, train up a child the way he should go. When he's grown up, he will not depart from it. And if you don't do it from childhood, if you get to teenage, uh, at, um, uh, a, a little above teenage, and you want to start it, you're in trouble. It, will not, it is a non-starter. So we have had a lot today. The Lord will continue to direct all our pathways. And our children will not go out of trade. Today, my kids are not worshiping with us, but what I, the report I get from them out there it's fantastic. The other time I was watching a program from uh, the church where my uh, children, go. when the pastor, when it was time for a sermon, the pastor came out and said, uh, it's sermon time, and our pastor, for, our preacher for today will be Tejuri Ayerumi. That is my baby. And she came out and spoke fantastically. That is the way our children should grow. God help you all. Thank you very much, sir. Um, time, 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 time is not on our side. So our next item on the agenda, I'm looking for Mama Oshinawo. Yes. Um, song ministration. We're going to skip that summary. We're going to skip summary. And Are we tired? Sure. I think it's time for us to... I will now invite uh, our brother, Moiwa James, to give us some melodious songs that we can dance to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, while the song is going on, we will uh, make our offering. Hallelujah. The envelopes have been distributed. Please make sure you have one. Thank you. If you are alive and you are happy and excited to be here today to celebrate with the good women, uh, can you shout a thunderous hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, no, our day, Lati, your logo, for your la to so call it, Larry, 
jo sera oluwa olu bala ade o lati lati for us and giving us the privilege to be here to gather here together and commune and incline our heart to the teachings of the holy spirit hallelujah hey, to the left to the right aha to the left to the right if you are living soul movement in life is an evidence that you are a living soul oh yes so you need to shake your body you get it shake to the left to the right aha now say sarare oshubare saraeda now sarare oshubare you are giving to god your creator sarare Oshibare, no one else will praise God on your behalf. Oh. So you need to do it on your own. Say, Sarare, Oshibare, Sarare, Oshibare, Aye, 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 Sarare, Sarare, Oshibare, Aye, 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 your best, your best, give up to God, the glory and honor. Sarare, oh my 
Oh, that's a
I am you so to go. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure we are all blessed with that song's ministration. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we are moving fast. Um, 
We have listened to lectures. We have made contributions. We have danced. But you know, everything that is good needs prayer. The one that is not good needs prayer to make it good. I will now invite one of our own. He's a one of our own. So he's not a visitor. Minister Deji. Olayemi. To lead us in minister. Nigba banu je ataru. Adwarabu. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I and will not rest. And for Jerusalem's sake, God says He will not rest until her righteousness until goes her forth. righteousness goes for as a brightness as brightness as and her salvation and her salvation as a lamp as a burns. lamp that burns. Verse two says, "The Gentiles shall, shall see, see your righteousness yes, and all kings, and all your, kings glory. your glory. You shall and be shall called by a new, by name, a new which the mouth name." Of the Lord shall God bless name. you, Auntie. Many of us, our names have become, um, they're not working anymore. Many of us are called by joy, but it's only we're working with sorrow and limitation. Many of us, there is promotion in our name, but we are stagnant. But scripture the says, this is the confidence that we have in him. That whatever we ask in his will, he hears us. First prayer point. Lord, arise and have mercy on me. It is only mercy that can do this situation. The Bible says that mercy goes over wrath. If God wants to respond to us by, by, by heaven, we should not be here at all. Many of us need to be crying. But scripture says, I will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her has come. come. The set time has is come. now. Lord, arise and have mercy on me. God, call me by a new name. 
in the name of Jesus. My comment here today, let it not be in vain. Are you praying? Are you praying to God? Lord, arise and have mercy on me. God, arise, arise. Oh, do what did let us pray let's open our mouth let's open our mouth let's open our mouth to god lord have mercy honor me what did they go shine for me? Lord, call Jesus. What did they go shine for me? And remember, did they go shine for me? Jehovah, did they go shine for me? Oh, no, no, Baba, did they go shine for me? Oh, no, 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 did they go shine for me? Jesus, shine for you, me. Shine for you, me. For what it took me, for what it took me, Jesus, for what it took me, Lanu Reco. Jesus, <laughs> Second prayer point. Lord, place your hand on my children. Let them become glory to be reckoned with. Let them become signs and wonders. Scripture says our children shall be for signs and wonders. In fact, it says they are for signs and wonders. And we have spoken about our children. We are not unaware that some of them may be adamant that they will not listen to the truth. But scripture says you can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth, you want to pray as a mother. Lord, let your hand rest upon my children. In the name of Jesus. Lord, place your hand on my children in the name of Jesus. I want you to go Lord, let your hand on my children in the name of Jesus. Let them be for signs and wonders. Let them become glory to be reckoned with. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus Oluawa. Please, we are going to repeat that prayer. Holiness and fitness, the son of Aaron, that's the same. Can we actually be proud of them? Even though their father was the high priest in the church. Ah, but they put their fathers to shame. And even the calling of their father. But you cannot shame God. They actually wanted to shame God that their father was born. But God, what happened to their father? Let us pray. Oh, through the prayer. Not be. Oh, through the prayer. 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 Oh, through the let us repeat that. Oh Lord, put your hand upon my children. Oh Lord, put your hand upon my children. And let them be a 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 
Please do not be angry. We're going to pray. There is so much familiar um, teaching doctrines outside there. The, the teaching that says that God does not exist. It's spirit that says I do not like myself as a woman. I want to be a oh, woman. And then the, the, the law the, 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 the law of the land. The law of the land says you cannot. Oh, be if you want to be a transgender, you have to be a transgender. If you want to change your sex, you can do so. Go ahead. But scripture says you can do nothing but, against the truth. But Father says you can do nothing against the truth. Of so God. they are teaching our children lies. The truth has not become a lie. The truth has not become a truth. Let us pray. It says return. You that are the truth. Let us pray. 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 Let us One more prayer point. I quickly read the scriptures. I might have read it earlier on, but I just want to start from verse 1. And then we'll say the final prayer point, and then I will leave here. Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm reading the New King James Version. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now, this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God. Now, when you look at that Lord, it's capital L-O-R-D. That's Almighty God himself. To keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged Amen. verse 3 therefore here women of covenant and be careful to observe it that it may be well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the lord god of your fathers has promised you a flowing with milk a land flowing with milk and honey Amen. here again women of covenant the lord our god the lord is one you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Verse 6 says, And this word which I command you today shall be in your heart. Listen. Verse 7 says, You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. When you walk by the way. When you lie down. And when you rise up. Everything you've heard today, don't just be hearers of the word. Scripture is saying, teach them to your children. Speak about it when you're sitting up. When you're watching a movie with them. When you're going to the market with them. When you're driving with them. Like our mother said, speak about it to them. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And they shall be as frontless between your eyes. And now says, you shall write them on the doorpost of your house. And on your gates. Amen. This is instruction from the Lord. Now the final prayer point. God 
God, please, please make me a better parent. Make me a better parent. So that I may be a good role model for my children. So that I may be a good role model for my children. All the speakers here agreed and they said something. Mm. See, our children do what we do than what we tell them. Yes. And so we are more like a role model to them. So a lot of us, we have led our children astray. Unknown. And then we'll be speaking to that children. What kind of behavior are you conducting? Let us pray. You truthful parents. God, please make me a better parent that I may be a good role model unto my children. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Let me be a good parent. Let me be a good role model for my children. Oh, Jesus Christ, help me. Let me be your father. Your words, let me be your father. My role, let me not be slave. 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 Let me Ni kenye ati eme ati omo ati gbogbo nkan to ba fun mi je ka fi jobo run se je ni oruko jesus christi oluwa wa agbo baba agbo adura ti agba yen agbo Loruko re la gbadura ki nse loruko eniyan bibele ni ati fun ani oruko to ti gbogbo oruko lo bi pe ni oruko jesus ki gbogbo kun ko ma wole agbadura si yen loni o loruko jesus ase orun ko ba le bere wa women of covenant i declare into your life as god live it and as the spirit live it you will not bury your children in the name of jesus you have come for this conference today I declare in the name that is above every other name that as the Lord liveth, you will not cry over your children in the name of Jesus. Even over your grandchildren, you will not cry in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that your body will not be an abode for sickness in the name of Jesus. Every one of you that have been crying, that have been saying, Lord, when will you do it? The set time is here. And I declare that after this gathering, testimonies beyond your expectation and imagination will come your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 If you are happy and you know, clap your hands. Adura wati baluru ko Jesu. On behalf of Women of Covenant, headed by our dear mother Agnes Odunfa, the committee would like to thank the church pastor, our Baba Jagede. He is unavoidably absent, but ably represented by our father, Special Apostle Dennis Ayerume. Thank you. We thank our guest speakers and facilitators, the choir, our invited guests, and everyone here present for finding time to attend this conference. 
I am sure we all have learned one or two things from our speakers and from contributions from the house. I pray that God will grant us his spirit, Amen. his power and ability Amen. to yield to God's instruction as we raise our children. Amen. God will always rise on our behalf Amen. in whatever situation we find ourselves and the blessings we receive today will remain everlasting with us. Amen. In Jesus' name. As we go home this afternoon, we will all reach our various destinations safely. Amen. As our mother said in her welcome address, we, uh, we eagerly look forward to seeing you next year at the gathering of the Women of Covenant. Amen. We will now take a closing prayer by our father, Special Apostle Pastor Fakoya. While Father Yerume will put us under the grace. Baba Bokwe Wow. I do call you of a tear from a lot of The women of Convenant, Omokoa, Mofi Moriho, Uba Tawa Tomba Soro. I bore or I a latter no more Baba Bokwe Keg by you out. I'm a lolly one in Bitarat Mbe, a major daily cool Ludmari. Emaja dele shaiso ni wo ya modun je kuju wa ko pe keso wa pele ka wa fi oko ati fun yin loruko la mo yin Jesu Kristi Oluwa wa ko lo ko bi fa ko si pa mu ko lo ko soju ro ko mo le so lara ko si sha nu fo ko lo ko ma boju wo wa ko si fo na lafia je ko ri of Jesu Kristi Oluwa wa fe mo ti olorun Dakwati and Mimimo, come about me. Lot is in law at the city lie lie. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hosanna! 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 Ye! Ye! And me ye! And the kind one you go. Please, for new covenant members, tomorrow's program is on this pathway. So bring it tomorrow. Bring it tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.